哭。Hey dudes, Jared here. Now, before you say it, yes, I am wearing the exact same top that I was wearing in my last video. I know, I'm a grot, just deal with it. I actually have a cold at the moment, so if my voice sounds a bit more dead, a bit more lifeless than usual, now you know why. So, today I am doing another Thundercrack thing. I'm gonna have to read out chapters 3 and 4, so have pity on me, please. Okay, so let's get into the video. Chapter 3, Thunder Dragon. It was running as fast as a Jaguar car. In a few seconds, it had passed the elves' bodies and was little over 50 metres behind me, and I turned just in time because a fireball just skinned my head, but several more came at me. I decided I would be safer hiding in the bushes, so I ran into the thicket and hid from the dragon. As I watched it through the gaps, I knew it was listening for signs of breathing, so I tried to stay as quiet as you would be in Murderer in the Dark, because I read somewhere that dragons have excellent hearing. Where would you read that dragons have excellent hearing? You literally come from a world without any dragons. It doesn't make any sense. He was getting so close to me I could almost feel his fiery breath. So praying that he wouldn't see me, I moved. On and on I crept, trying not to look back at that demonic creature. But suddenly I stepped on a twig and when I turned around all I could see were those fiery red eyes and that evil expression that meant I saw you. That, that's really cliche, he stepped on a twig. Uh, that happens in literally everything. Then I started running, but he just kept shooting fireballs, so I had to dodge them. It was kind of like Mario, but in real life. Okay, if I'd actually published this book, I probably would have gotten sued by the Nintendo, or whatever whatever company I reference their pop culture icon. I don't know, I would have been sued by so many companies. It was kind of like Mario, but in real life. He was just about to blast me with a 100 degree fireball. A 100 degree fireball. I know I keep pausing so often, but it doesn't make sense. Fire is way hotter than 100 degrees. <laughs> oh my goodness. Then luckily I found a cave entrance and got in just in the nick of time. I have felt safer, but not for long because he was smashing and tearing apart the stone roof. Everywhere rocks were crashing down, so I ran out of the cave, because I decided that I had more of a chance to survive out here. Then I saw those evil eyes again, and I knew it meant trouble. Nah, no trouble whatsoever. You think, you think evil eyes mean trouble? That's racist. You're a racist little bow. Firstly, I narrowly avoided an aerial strike and jump kicked it, with no effect at all, except that it made it slightly madder and hurt myself a lot. Next, I narrowly avoided getting my head cut off, and dodged a falling tree that wounded the animal. But even with this support, I knew that the monster would win eventually, and I nearly gave up for lost. And I nearly gave up for lost? Maybe that's proper grammar? I, I can't think right now, I'm too groggy. When I spotted a gleaming thing a few metres away, I found out what it was. I couldn't believe it. There was a golden sword lying in between the rubble. Wow, that's the most unbelievable thing that has happened to you all day. I frantically ran for the sword and before it shot me with another fireball, I'd already got the sword and stabbed it into its paw. I watched as it cried in agony and almost felt sorry for it until it threw me at a rock, which made me angry but I couldn't do anything because the pain searing in my body disabled me to, disabled me to run very far, but I, I knew if I didn't run it would kill me for sure. So I managed a few painful meters, but it was no use because it picked me up like a teddy bear and started to thrust me towards its mouth. It was going to eat me! Nah, you jump into conclusions. That's racism again. He's being racist again. He's not going to eat you. He's probably not going to eat you. Yeah, it probably is. Trying not to die was hard. <laughs> oh, yes. Trying not to die was very hard. That, that's a struggle that all of us have to live with. Trying not to die was hard, but I managed to put my hand out to push away from it, but when I touched it, I felt an electric shock come through me, and saw as this beast's eyes changed from red to green to blue, and saw as his whole body turned blue, and he had a lightning bolt on his chest. And the one on my arm was glowing, and I felt a bit different. I was frozen in shock, and I wondered if I caused this transformation. It felt weird flying on a dragon. Wait, when did you, when did you jump on the dragon? Uh, you can't just skip like that. You have to say he gets on the dragon because there's no break. It's just literally just paragraph to paragraph. It felt weird flying on a dragon and it was hard to not fall off during all the somersaults and backflips. But I soon got the hang of it. 
If you've ever flown on a plane, then you get the basic idea of what flying on a dragon was like. Yeah, because they're exactly the same, aren't they? Exactly the same. But one time on Farborn, that's what I called the dragon, I also found out that it was a she. She was in the middle of a backflip when I suddenly lost my footing and fell off her. Now keep in mind, I hadn't read the Aragon books at this point. I'm reading them now. They're amazing books, but I hadn't read them at, at this point. So I didn't even gain any inspiration from them, even though it literally seems like an exact rip-off to me now. It was like skydiving without a parachute, and I was trying to slow myself down, but I was going so fast it was impossible to slow down. So I kept falling, and when I was about to hit a large tree, Farborn picked me up, and when I was on her back, I told her not to do stunts, and something weird happened. She actually understood me. Whoa, that's, that is hands down the most amazing experience he has had all day. A dragon understood him. When I got better at flying, I started to steer her to the village so I could scare those beasts away. But then I saw these huge smoking raven-like beasts with these demented ghostly heads and lizard creatures with smoking arms. But there was another thing on board. It was Luke. I steered over to the bird and tried to shoot them with fire, but Farborn shot out lightning. Cool, I said to myself. But then the raven creature, which was called a garter, shot something black that hit with a hard thud. I tried to fight back, but then another one came out from behind and started chasing me. I needed to defeat them while, not, while trying not to take down the one that Luke was on. Okay, so now time for chapter 4. Creatively titled, Air Battle. Just Air Battle. That is so creative. Well, I was darting in between fire and I sometimes shot back. But these creatures knew a lot more about flying than I did. But I asked Farborn if she wanted to try her stunts. Amazingly, she nodded and her kind glare looked like she was saying, hold on tight because I'm not slowing down. Kind glare. Is there, any, is there any such thing as having a kind glare? She suddenly started doing backflips and 360s. And in a few minutes, she had widened the gap between these beasts by at least 15 minutes and she was going faster. I decided to plunge down into the clouds so I could stop, then suddenly shoot a bolt at these demons. So down I plunged until I reached the clouds. Then I waited and saw through a gap some wings and shot a bolt at them, which hit at a perfect shot. And as I watched it go down, I saw that I had done something terrible and made a horrible mistake. It was Luke's ride that I had shot down. Whoa, that was literally the one thing you had to worry about, not shooting him down, and you failed. You suck. Then again, you did take on like... 50 elves and an entire dragon, you're only 13. How did he do that? How? As I raced after them, I saw the other one following me, but I didn't worry about it, but only about my friend. I used but way too much. We were already at 1500 meters in the air and had dropped down 276 meters in two minutes. I wondered if I could ever catch up with them, but we were now at 900 meters and getting lower. I had nearly caught Luke when we broke the barrier of sound and a large thump happened. The clock was ticking. Now at 400 meters I had to rush, but as I got closer I started reaching out my hand to Luke who was a few feet away. With only 150 meters to go, I wondered what would happen if I couldn't catch him. He would die and I would have lost my best friend. At 115 meters I could see the trees and was only a few feet away when I noticed a forest closing in on us. So frantically, at 45 meters above the trees, I only had a few seconds, and as I counted in my head, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and with that I pulled Luke onto Farborn, and I just missed the treetops by flying upwards. Are you okay? I asked Luke while holding his shirt. Yeah, pant, pant. I'm fine, he replied. Good, I said to him. I don't think you would like being flat Stanley, neither your parents, I mean parent. Another pop culture icon for you. What? He replied in a shaken little voice. Oh right, yeah, how did you get a dragon? He asked. Wouldn't that be the first question you asked? Like, someone catches you and you're just like, Hey, he's got a dragon. Oh, I won't ask that yet. I won't. Don't worry. Somehow she just bonded when I touched her. By the way, her name is Farborn, I replied. Cool name, Farborn. Does she like that name? He asked. But then six more of the raven things started chasing us. Save your energy, I retorted, and use it to steer. I had to steer frantically because of the garters that were shooting at me. I tried to go up, but they just kept shooting. I had no choice. I had to go down. Farborn, I said. If we want to survive this, I need you to do whatever I say. Do you get that? She nodded in reply. 
I couldn't believe that she could understand me. Well, that that's the third time. Third time. Just get used to it, mate. Otherwise, you're going to die. Okay. When I tell you to go down, then you go down. When I tell you to go up, you go up, I said to her. And Luke, when you see a mist coming at us, you tell me, and I'll steer. Oh, and a mist is what those raven things shoot at us. And when you need a break, mist coming from straight behind us, he said alarmingly, and another coming from the top of us. Why'd you call it mist? That's weird. That's really weird. No one told you to call it mist, you just felt like calling it mist instead of calling it, like, weird black balls. Okay, don't call it that. So I swerved the incoming fire and said, down. So Farborn shot down and dodged the trees. Yes, I shouted. One of them hit a tree. But then they started nipping at us. Up, I shouted. Up, up. Then another one got caught in a tree. These guys obviously suck at flying if they can't even beat a 13-year-old. Like, literally, they're getting caught in trees, and they have small amounts. They were slowly decreasing in number, but they wouldn't stop chasing us. There isn't much places to go when you're flying high in the air, so I told Farborn to go down a bit more. Then, without me saying so, she shot some lightning at some gun. Then, without me saying so, she shot some lightning at some garters. Then two of them fell down. Yes, I shouted at Luke. We're going to survive this. He jinxed it. He's he's jinxed it. I know it. But just after I said this, the remaining garters started retreating. I can't believe it! Screamed Luke. They're retreating. We did a short little happy dance until I saw that more more and more garters were coming, and then they weren't retreating at all, but connecting. I saw as they changed into a hideous beast that was about 250 feet tall. Then from below me I heard someone say, Get ready the cannons! Arm the men! We've got a Garn Terror on our hands! And that is the end of chapter 4. Next one, chapter 5, Rage of the Garn Terror. I can, I can tell how excited you guys are to get up to chapter 5 of this illustriously beautiful book. Hope you all join me for that amazing chapter where we get to find out what the hell this, what the hell a gun terror is. So thank you all for watching this video. If you would like to check out more videos, just check out more videos.